Hello and welcome back to Old Yarn Fidcast. Today we continue our foray into depictions of the cicada in ancient literature. Today's story is taken from Shadowings, written by Lafcadio Hearn, and copyrighted 1901, published by Little Brown and Company in Boston. Before speaking further of the poetical literature of Semi, I must attempt a few remarks about the Semi themselves. But the reader need not expect anything entomological. Excepting, perhaps, the butterflies, the insects of Japan are still little known to men of science. And all that I can say about semi has been learned from inquiry, from personal observation, and from old Japanese books of an interesting but totally unscientific kind. Not only do the authors contradict each other as to the names and characteristics of the best-known semi, they attach the word semi to names of insects, which are not cicada. The following enumeration of semi is certainly incomplete, but I believe that it includes the better known varieties and the best melodists. I must ask the reader, however, to bear in mind that the time of the appearance of certain semi differs in different parts of Japan, that the same kind of semi may be called by different names in different provinces, and that these notes have been written in Tokyo. Number one. Very small semi appear in the spring, but the first of the big semi to make itself heard is the heruzemi, or spring semi, also called umazemi, horse semi, kumazemi, bear semi, and other names. It makes a shrill wheezing sound. Be getting low and gradually rising to a pitch of painful intensity. No other cicada is so noisy as the Heruzami, but the life of the creature appears to end with a season. Probably this is the semi referred to in an old Japanese poem. The day after the first day on which we exclaim, Oh, how hot it is! The first semi begins to cry. Number two. Shini Shini. The Shini Shini, also called Yamazumi, or Mountain Semi, Kumazami, or Bear Semi, and O Semi, or Great Semi, begins to sing as early as May. It is a very large insect. The upper part of the body is almost black, and the belly is a silvery white. The head has curious red markings. The name Shini Shini is derived from the note of the creature, which resembles a quick, continual repetition of the syllables Shini. About Kyoto, the semi is common. It is rarely heard in Tokyo. My first opportunity to examine an o semi was in Shizuoka. Its utterance is much more complex than the Japanese onomatope implies. I should liken it to the noise of a sewing machine in full operation. There is a double sound. You hear not only the succession of sharp metallic clickings, but also below these a slower series of dull clanking tones. The stridulatory organs are light green, looking almost like a pair of tiny green leaves attached to the thorax. Number three. The aburazemi, or oil semi, makes its appearance early in the summer. I am told that it owes its name to the fact that its shrilling resembles the sound of oil or grease frying in a pan. Some writers say that the shrilling resembles the sound of the syllables... Gatcherin, gatcherin! But others compare it to the noise of boiling water. The aburazami begins to chant about sunrise, then a great soft hissing begins to ascend from all the trees. At such an hour, when the foliage of woods and gardens still sparkles with dew, might have been composed the following verse, the only one in my collection relating to the aburazami. Speaking with that voice, has the dew taken life? 
Only the Abura Zemi, number four. Mugi Kara Zemi. The Mugi Kara Zemi, or Barley Harvest Semi, also called Goshiki Semi, or Five Colored Semi, appears early in the summer. It makes two distinct sounds in different keys, resembling the syllables Shin, 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 Chi, Chi. Number five. Higurashi or Kanakana. This insect, whose name signifies day darkening, is the most remarkable of all the Japanese cicadae. It is not the finest singer among them, but even as a melodist, it ranks second only to the Tsuku Tsuku Boshi. It is the special minstrel of twilight, singing only at dawn and sunset. Whereas most of the other semi make their music only in the full blaze of day, pausing even when rain clouds obscure the sun. In Tokyo, the higurashi usually appears about the end of June or the beginning of July. Its wonderful cry, kana 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 kana, beginning always in a very high, clear key and slowly descending, kana 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 it is almost exactly like the sound of a good handbell. <laughs> Very quickly rung. It is not a clashing sound, as of violent ringing. It is quick, steady, and of surprising sonority. I believe that a single higurashi can be plainly heard a quarter of a mile away. Yet, as the old Japanese poet Ye Yu observed, no matter how many higurashi be singing together, we never find them noisy. Though powerful and penetrating as a resonance of metal, the Higurashi's call is musical even to the degree of sweetness. And there is a peculiar melody in it that accords with the hour of gloaming. But the most astonishing fact in regard to the cry of the Higurashi is the individual quality characterizing the note of each insect. No two Higurashi sing precisely in the same tone. If you hear a dozen of them singing at once, you will find that the timbre of each voice is recognizably different from every other. Certain notes ring like silver, others vibrate like bronze, and, besides varieties of timbre suggesting bells of various weight and composition, there are even differences in tone that suggest different forms of bell. I have already said that the name Higurashi means day darkening, in the sense of twilight, gloaming dusk. And there are many Japanese verses containing plays on words, the poets affecting to believe, as in the following example, that the crying of the insect hastens the coming of darkness. Oh, Higurashi, even if you let it alone, day darkens fast enough. This, intended to express a melancholy mood, may seem to the Western reader far-fetched. But another little poem, referring to the effect of the sound upon the conscience of an idler, will be appreciated by anyone accustomed to hear the higurashi. I may observe, in this connection, that the first clear evening cry of the insect is quite as startling as the sudden ringing of a bell. Already, O oh Higurashi, your call announces the evening. Alas, for the passing day, with its duties left undone! Number 6. Min Min Zemi The Min Min Zemi begins to sing in the period of greatest heat. It is called min min because its note is thought to resemble the syllable min repeated over and over again, slowly at first, and then very loudly, then more and more quickly and softly, till the utterance dies away in a sort of buzz. Min. 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 min.
The sound is plaintive and not unpleasing. It is often compared to the sound of the voice of a priest chanting the sutras. Number seven, the Zuku Zuku Boshi. On the day immediately following the festival of the dead, by the old Japanese calendar, which is incomparably more exact than our Western calendar in regard to nature changes and manifestations, begins to sing the Tsuku Tsuku Boshi. This creature may be said to sing like a bird. It is also called Kutsu Kutsu Boshi, Shoku Choku Uusu, Tsuku Tsuku Hoshi, Tsuku Tsuku Oishi, all automatopoetic appellations. The sounds of its song have been imitated in different ways by various writers. In Aizumu, the common version is Tsuku Tsuku Uisu, Tsuku Tsuku Uisu, Tsuku Tsuku Uisu, Ui Osu, Ui Osu, Ui Osu, Ui Osu. Another verse runs Tsuku Tsuku Uisu, Tsuku Tsuku Uisu. Tsuku tsuku uisu chi i yara chi i yara chi i yara chi i chi 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 But some say that the sound is tsuku shi koishi. There is a legend that in old times the man of the ancient name of fell sick and died while far away from home, and that the ghost of him became an autumn cicada, which cries unceasingly tsuku shi koishi. Tsukushi Koishi. I long for. Gushi. I want to see. Gushi. It is a curious fact that the earlier semi have the harshest and simplest notes. The musical semi do not appear until summer, and the Tsuku Tsuku Boshi, having the most complex and melodious utterance of all, is one of the latest to mature. Number eight, the. The is an autumn cicada. The word means a suspended bell, especially the big bell of a Buddhist temple. I'm somewhat puzzled by the name, for the insect's music really suggests the tones of a Japanese harp or koto, as good authorities declare. Perhaps the appellation refers not to the boom of the bell, but to those deep, sweet hummings which follow after the peal, wave upon wave. Thank you for watching this episode of Old Yarn Vidcast. Uh, like and comment if you enjoyed following along with me struggling to, to reproduce some of these cicada sounds for you and pronounce some of these Japanese words. My name is Marita Shustak. Check out my website, marutashustack.com, for art and reflections. Check out my YouTube for the rest of <coughs> for the rest of this series. <sighs> More to come in our brief foray into the depictions of the cicada in ancient literature.